What's going on guys and gals? Bonafide Hustler here, coming to you live from my office, and today I'm gonna to show you guys my incredible finds from two days from four thrift stores. So anyways, I'm the Bonafide Hustler on a part-time basis. I am flipping things that I find from garage sales, estate sales, yard sales, flea markets, pawn shops, swap meets, big box stores, and even thrift stores. And I'm putting on places like eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, my antique booth, and other consignment stores in town. Anyways, I'm one of the co-owners of the greenroomuniversity.com. It's the second link down below. Go check it out. But anyways, today I'm going to show you these finds. And some of the finds that I'm going to show you were actually shown on yesterday's thrift battle so you can go check that out as well that was a really good show i actually did win by like a small margin and um, that show is now not live but it is on my channel thrift battle number five so uh, yeah that was a lot of fun hard battle but i did show some of these finds there on that battle so anyways um i'm gonna go through the finds and there's some really neat ones that you're not gonna be like you're gonna be like what like i don't get it one i found today which was pretty stellar um say like eight dollar find i think i can flip for about 150 bucks so show you that thing at the very end and then there's even like a sleeper find too where you're like what like no way that has a potential of just making really big money okay so the very first find that i showed yesterday on thrift battle i'm just going to go over it again but uh, i was at a goodwill and i was walking through i was in the mail section um where the jackets are and there's some vests there and windproof jackets and whatever so i'm always filtering through you know just for that part i'm looking for down jackets i'm looking for the right kind of fleeces. I'm looking for old North Face stuff, vintage Gore-Tex garments, um, you know, CC Filson stuff, anything I can get my hands on that's really worth my time with eBay. Because as you guys may or may not know, I do this part time, right? Because uh, the other part of my life, I am working on all kinds of stuff behind the scenes and really trying to get the fitness channel up and running where it needs to be and working on the green room behind the scenes as well. So I do this on a part time basis. And that's good because I'm trying to, you know, I, my goal. 2018s to get really really full-time income just from ebay like just from ebay doing a part-time kind of hour setup so anyways my goal <clears throat> is to have 200 active amazing listings that pay about 50 or more after all the fees are done and the things shipped out and everything it pays me 50 dollars in profit or more so that's my goal this year is to get 200 of those kind of items in my store and not to really ever have more than 200 items in my ebay store i'm going to target around a 20 or 30 percent sell-through rate and i think that's personally what would make me super happy and keep me in the game to keep doing this so the very first find i found um yesterday in that jacket section was a six dollar woolrich vest now i don't typically pop on this brand all the time um, kind of the same as Pendleton. I don't pop on every Pendleton's that I see because a lot of Pendleton's can get just kind of washed out in the mix and not really pay that much. But certain ones from those both those brands do well. So I don't buy too much Woolridge stuff, but when it comes down to a mint condition men's vest with no holes in it, because I did a really good check. Anytime you deal with a wool garment, you're gonna want to check the absolute crap out of it. And if you can, hold it up to some light and see if you can you know, see where the holes are. But for the most part, if you don't find any, then you're pretty lucky because a lot of wool garments will have holes in there. So this one right here, men's extra large vest, I'm gonna be snapping a picture of it probably right after the show, I'm gonna go up on eBay for around $59. So that's pretty close to my $50 mark. I'm gonna take that right there. Um, and I want to I kind of want to swing to see how it does, right? Because we're still cold season, but in about two more months, three more months, I probably would not swing on something like this. Okay, what else do I have? Um, there is one uh, item down here that I bent my rule for, and I'll show you that uh, probably right now. Okay, so I bent my rules on this one. I had to because it's an easy sell, probably be in my store for about one or two weeks at most. It's a fast sell. It'll probably award me about $30, okay? So that right there, the, the thing that I bought was a $6 pair of cool shorts. Now these are not just normal shorts, they're men's shorts, but they're also the ones that ride past the knee. So those are cool. People like them for trekking, for some people even mountain biking these. It's a great size, it's size 34. Um, it's a Crag Series uh, cool pair of shorts. Um, I'm not the kind of reseller who's gonna get into clothing like most people get into clothing. Like I just don't believe in it. Um, and I don't want to kind of spin my wheels, right? I'm looking for the more fun flips, the flips that really define like all the knowledge that I have in my head. And I don't want to be kind of spinning my wheels with clothing. Now, clothing is an okay kind of hustle. If you're out there and you're like doing well with clothing, it's okay. But for me, anytime that I've ever 
try to dabble into it or whatever. It's not that I wasn't good at it. It's I it just I didn't feel it was worth my time. Now, if I had a worker or something, maybe it would have been, but it just wasn't worth my time. And I wasn't really excited about any of it, honestly. And if you're not excited about something that you're flipping, the chances are it's going to stay around for a while because anybody can say like, oh, yeah, well, Polo is a great brand or Territory Head, great brand, you know. But the question is, out of all the Polo garments that you've sold and all the ones that you still have in your inventory, you know, where are you in that whole mix, right? With all the Territory Head ones and um, Brooks Brothers this or whatever, like out of all the ones that you've sold, you know, can you look back and all the time you've invested in that brand, can you look back and say it's worth it? Even taking into account the stuff that hasn't sold yet or the stuff that's in a death pile. Um, so you have to think about those things. It's the big picture that matters, right? Um, so anytime I think big picture, I'm like, all right, you know, this next thing I'm doing in 2018 is a big project, right? I, I want to stick with things that really make me happy, that I have a lot of energy behind, that I want to list, that I want to move out of the house, and uh, that won't stay around too uh, too much. Like maybe the six month mark is probably the, the that's my tail end of like what I want to keep something at. Anyways, cool Crag series shorts are really good shorts. If you find any kind of cool jeans or anything like that, I do have a pair of cool pants that I found that just sitting back there. You kind of see them. Um, those are patina dyed, normal, cool rider pants. Um, those are going to be paying around a $50 bill, something like that. Maybe like a $40 bill. I bend my rules for a couple things, but not very many things. So this one I had to because I know one or two weeks, this will be out of my store. First class rate too, which is even better. Um, so yeah, had to get that. I spent $6 on them. They'll probably sell for around 39, about 45 bucks. So that's pretty good. I wanted to bend my rule just for this one right here. Uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> good to see all you guys. Uh, tons of amazing people here in the feed. Uh, give me one second to shout out a couple people. Adam A five one seven, Steve Grandpa Side Money. Oh, what's up, Grandpa Side Money? I know who that is. Les, Rhonda W, Debbie Porter, Mary Jane Thomas, my boy Knight Required Fields in the feed. Mighty Mushroom, Murray Zuckerman. Oh, there's a there's another one of my boys right there, Mr. Albert Lopez. What's up? Adam A517. Oh, Joe Molina. Definitely my boy. He actually bought one of my private label Strella hats, which is up there. I got some Strella hats up there. Anyways, um, let's go to the next find real quick. Good to see everyone. What's up, Master Chief? That's my friend Brock, too, who lives in Austin, um, who we do antique mall consignment with each other. So that's cool. Okay. So next find was really awesome. I found it in the men's section. I did show it yesterday on Thrift Battle, but I'll show it to you again and get a little bit more closer up view of this thing. Huh. These are Tory Birch wedge hikers. Um, hideous, right? Absolutely hideous. So, you know, if you are a uh, um, stripper or prostitute and you decide you want to go hiking, I guess this is the boot for you, right? Um, no, but all jokes aside, they are cool. I mean, they're pebble leather made by a strong brand, Tory Birch. Last reported price, MSRP was around $400. Last price that I could find new or even mint was 150 or 200 bucks, somewhere around there. There's one on Etsy for like 125. Anyways, um, these, yeah, everyone's laughing at the stripper comment. Like, hey, maybe, maybe strippers want to get their ice axes out and start climbing a wall. I have no idea, man. Like, uh, anyways, but yeah, I tell you what, man, if you're out in the if you're out in the wild and you see a stripper with these things on, hey, at least she likes the great outdoors, right? She's got some priorities straight. Okay, so these were five bucks. Um, they have a nine dollar sticker on them and our ten dollar sticker on them, but they're five bucks. They couldn't find this one survey coupon, and so they gave me like a 50% discount on the highest price item. I had it in my hands, and it was this one. So I got it for five bucks. I was like, holy crap. So I'm gonna be shooting around the 120, 140 mark for these. I think it's totally feasible, right? Uh, yeah, some stripper out there is gonna be super happy. So this app definitely got into those. I mean, they have like hardly anywhere. I mean, just some little bit of wear and tear, but if you look at the bottom of these things, right? I'm telling you, man, like these things are in really good condition. Plus they got the little tassels right there. So, you know, if you go to a party, uh, you definitely won't be the shy person in the corner if you have tassels on, right? Okay. I have a boot. I have some boots with tassels on them. I tell you what, man, when I go to places with them and get togethers, man, people always talk about them. And I always think like, if I take the tassels off, like what happens? Like, is it, does the night just start sucking all of a sudden? I think the tassels really make a big difference. Okay, so something I'm trying out. Another find I want to show you guys. Shortly before, okay, so like earlier this week, what are we at? Like Thursday? So I think Monday this week, I was really thinking about incorporating this into my thrift strategy. And that is popping on really good golfing vest or golfing jackets, but not shirts, not pants. 
I don't want to get into clothing. I really do not want to get into clothing, but I will get into the right clothing. Just like I get into the clothing that's like outdoors based or I get into like, uh, you know, really amazing jackets. Like, yeah, I'll get into that because those are sure sales and they got great markets. But other things that have sure sales and great markets are sometimes golf jackets, golfing vests, certain brands. Here's one for you right here. This one's called Zero Restriction. I'll show it to you guys. See it right there? All right, so zero restriction. Oh, nope, never mind. You couldn't see it. Zero restriction right there. But the brand kind of looks like a ZR. So if you see this on the back of something, that's what it says, ZR. All right, so zero restriction uh, Gore-Tex jacket with removable sleeves and removable elbow pieces too. So each sleeve has a removable elbow portion right here, like if you want to get a half sleeve. And then you can go full sleeve, like zipper off right there. So this is what the whole garment looks like. And it is Gore-Tex as well. So that's like the biggest selling point out of the whole thing. It seems truly waterproof, right? Um, no stowable hood that I can see right now. But uh, I think most golf people probably have umbrellas or caddy pe <laughs> caddies with umbrellas. Uh, but yeah, there's the big Gore-Tex logo right there. That's a really big seller. So anytime you see Gore-Tex on something, typically it starts moving it up in a category pretty quickly. Especially when you see it on garments. <clears throat> that garment's probably arguably worth more than... 60 bucks pretty quickly. No Gore-Tex Gore really is never found on garments that are like sub $100. But on a retail standpoint, then maybe like 60 bucks. Okay, so this one right here, um, the solds are somewhere around 80 to about 150. I'll be shooting for around 100 to 120 for this thing. I paid $12 for it at a Sabres yesterday. So that's, look out for that. You know, I'll tell you what, I can't say look out for that because like I said, this was my like experiment thing. So don't look out for it yet, but maybe look out for it. Let me do a couple more. If this turns out to be a mistake, I'll let you know. But um, something I wanted to get into. Okay. Uh, my name is Mushroom says, like this video. That's right. Like this video, guys. I don't ask for too many things. So uh, hit the like button. Okay, next find. Really cool. We're, getting, we're, we're starting to get closer to like the really, really good stuff. But this is pretty good. This was found yesterday. It was $25. And uh, extremely unsuspecting kind of thing that most people would probably never pick up. But me being a dopio connoisseur and a connoisseur of coffee, I kind of know about ex ex uh, expensive espresso machines and things like that. So um, if you ever go around like kind of ritzy malls and stuff like that, and you go to some of these places that have, I think one of the places is called like Sur La Table or Sur La Table, Tabla, something like that. Um, I'm, try I'm trying to think of these other places that have a lot of like, um, like crock pots and like really expensive, like cast iron stuff. William Sonoma, uh, Sonoma or Sonoma, whatever it's called. Um, those kind of places, right, that have like a lot of cooking things. Uh, typically somewhere in those kind of stores, there's going to be like an espresso uh, espresso machine display. And there they're going to have all kind of uh, accessories for these espresso machines, which are usually pretty big money. Like a good espresso machine, typically, you would be thinking like, well, isn't a good espresso machine like 100 bucks? Like not really. In rich people terms, a good espresso machine somewhere around a thousand to about ten grand. I'm not even kidding. So you have to look up like you know bigger brands like some of Delonghi, uh, Gagia, Jura. Um, there's a bunch of other ones, but for the most part, if you go into stores like that, you'll start memorizing some of the brands of some of these machines that are just like astronomically priced. But people with money love to buy quality things. Okay, and I'm not talking about some Krups or Krupp or whatever it's called. I'm not talking about a Black & Decker espresso machine. I'm talking about the real deal steel ones with gauges and frothing devices and you know milk coolers built into them and all kinds of crazy, crazy bells and whistles. Um, and they look really neat too. So it's like a piece that looks good. It's not some cheap like toaster looking thing in the corner. It's a real deal machine sitting around like badass machine that you can make basically anything that's coffee related out of. So <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, some go up to 10 grand. I mean, the ones that you see at some of the coffee stores here in Austin, Texas, I know for a fact are between 20 and $30,000 for a multi-station uh, coffee machine. So yeah, some of these are crazy made by like Simonelli or there are a bunch of other ones. But I mean, these are crazy machines that are expensive, man. They account for humidity when you make espresso, they do all kinds of crazy things. Um, but when someone wants the like the highest grade, you know, coffee or bean or squeeze or whatever, I mean, you have to have the machine that can deliver that. Anyway, so I go to stores like that, right? When I'm bored or if my wife wants to go shopping in one of those stores, like I don't shop. I go and look for things that are worth money so I can learn, right? And so I've known about this for years. This brand called Jura, 
There we go. And sorry that these videos are a little bit more long-winded, but that's how I like to teach things, guys. Like I, I could tell you, like, look out for this, and like it'll slip your mind, and you'll just end up popping on some stupid-looking thing that looks just like this, and you'll waste your money, right? I want you guys to make money based on my videos. That's the reason why I, I, I do a little bit more talking than normal. The other reason why I do a little bit more talking than normal, but I like it, is because it does pay a little bit better on AdSense revenue. I ain't gonna lie to you, um, but. The only way to really be able to make money in this game is to be taught, to be taught how to fish so you can fish for a lifetime, right? I could give you a fish, but that's not going to do you any good. So Jura is a good brand. So go check out Jura. This is a $25 milk cooler, okay? So the milk cooler stands next to the machine. It cools the milk until the straw thing brings it into the machine, which it steams it, frosts it, whatever. Anyways, this thing, uh, you know, anytime you have anything with a cord, you want to test it on site. You see that right there? There's a fan back there, which I probably have to clean out some of this little dust. Nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, general little clean over this thing. Uh, there's some. There are a fair amount of solds. They're between about 120 and 100, and I'm estimating 160-ish. Okay, so I spent 25 for this thing. Relatively small box. It'll go into some bubble wrap. Good to go. I did plug it in at the store, and the milk cooler worked fine. Um, it's one of those things that you can plug in, kind of like a Villaware, and you can stick your hand in there, right? and you'll feel it get hot. I'm not talking about grilling your hand, okay? Um, but I am talking about sticking your hand in this thing, feeling if it gets cold. It's a milk cooler, so I was like, I took this thing out, I plugged it in, and I stuck my hand in there, and I waited for it to get cold, and it did. So that was good. Um, anytime I find a Villaware that's worth hustling, I'll plug it in, I'll stick my hand in there, and I'll put my, the other piece down on it, like my hand is a patini. But once it starts heating up on both sides, I go, all right, it feels good. Then I take my hand out, and everything's all good. So anyway, that's what I bought yesterday from a thrift store. Thrift store number two or three, whatever I was at. I only went to four thrift stores in the past two days. I went to three today, two today, two today, and I went to two yesterday or three yesterday. Either way, I think it was like four total because some don't count because it was just like in and out real quick. It doesn't really count. So anyways, um, let me talk to you guys about, uh, so we talked about that Jura thing, which is cool. I want to talk to you about something I found today, which was really neat. Um, it didn't have a sticker on it. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my God, Like I want to pick this thing up. It didn't have a sticker on it, which is kind of frightful. It can be a good thing, but it's kind of frightful because you have to take it to the back. Now you've shown your interest in the item, which kind of sucks. So the person in the back might be like, all right, cool. Like This person's probably going to buy it regardless. But the person in the back slapped on a $7.99 sticker on this thing. It's sitting right here. Who wants to guess what it is? Uh, you can see this much in the video. What do you guys think this thing is? Right here, I'm pointing right at it. What do you think that is? Let me know. Um, Mr. Co MC Coin and Joy says, how much do you want for it? Uh, the Jura, yeah, uh, I'm gonna pro I'll, I'll go probably no lower than 120. If I go 120, it'll probably sell tomorrow. Like, So I'm gonna try to shoot for like 150 or so and see what happens. 150, store on sale. So I'll start like 189, maybe 199.99. My, my store is on sale for 25% off, so I have to account for that. It'll bring it down to the, two, the 150 mark with a store on sale. The algorithm promotes my listing. I have free shipping, so it looks all good. And I bet you it's gone probably within a week. I really do. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, so we have a guess. It's a box. No, it's a Starbucks espresso machine. No, it's a label machine. We're getting close. It's a school projector. No. It's a cold bowl of oatmeal. No. Uh, it's a wine fridge. It's a good guess, but no. I'll give you an. I'll give you a hint. It's about ten inches tall. So there's another hint for you. It's a speaker. Ah, Malu Jimmy. We got some smart people in the feed. Malu Jimmy. I've I've had the pleasure. I'll say it like this because he would probably say it back to me like that. But I'll say it like this because I'm always very thankful for people to come into my hot seat, allow me to film them, and for it to be on YouTube. Um, but Malu Jimmy is an amazing hustler that I've hustled with at least four times by now, and I've probably seen him at two meetups. Um, he's, a, he's been a Green Room member for a very long time. He's made it on some a lot of my videos, plus he's made it on one show. Um, but yeah, Malu Jimmy is fun to hustle with. He's always cutting up and having fun when he's in the hot seat. Um, there's never really a serious moment with Malu Jimmy, which is good. Like, that's the kind of person I like to be around. Always be joking and always like test each other, like, you know, why are you buying that? And like, I don't know. We always seem to find stuff when we hustle together. I like that kind of synergy when I hustle with Malu Jimmy. So he's really cool. He's in Houston, Texas. So if you're in Houston, Texas and you're in the green room, go hit up uh, Jimmy. Um, you'll figure it out. You'll know who he is in the green room. But uh, yeah, go hustle with him. He's, he's notorious for hustling during his lunch hours and making good money. Okay, so here's the actual 
Pick up. Yeah, we're always learning, Mallory. That's right. He's in the feed. So here's the printer. Now, one thing you might notice, and this is the only reason I really started to look at this thing immediately, is the size of this thing. Okay, the size of this thing is gigantic, and that's exactly what I saw the second. This will probably be the sixth one I've ever flipped. Um, the very first one I flipped, I forgot. Okay, so basically, like this is, I'll kind of give you like the breakdown of like all the things that I've done with these. But this one, and I'll, I'll give credit to Eric Spears, the college picker. He was the one who kind of started me into this kind of genre of printers. But this is a large format printer, always also known as a wide format printer. Large format printer, usually for making photos. Uh, sometimes really large format printers can do blueprints and things like that. Uh, art, art, for but for the most part, it's photos and big photos. So this is an Epson Photo 1400. An Epson, four, Epson Photo 1400 is a little bit on the lower side of the wide format ones. Wide format printers or printers in general can have issues with their ink heads, um, but the, the fact that they're wide format means if anybody has a broken wide format printer that they love out there and they find one for parts or not, you know, or what not working on eBay, then they can get, they can still pay, uh, you know, 150, 300, whatever. So I'm going to talk to you about my wide format experience today. And after talking to Eric about it probably three or four years ago, uh, this will be my sixth one I've flipped. I think two went locally. Three made it on eBay. This will be the sixth one. The two of that went locally. I've never sold one that was less than $110. I've never spent more than 30 on one of these things. Um, the one that I did spend 30 on ended up selling for $769.99 within 30 minutes of me listing it. Uh, that was a garage sale find back in 2016. Um, this one right here at $8 is probably going to sell my guess for around 120 to 150. I'm gonna to try to get a test page to come out of it. I'm gonna see and kind of take the picture of the test page, put it on eBay as well. I don't like to ship these things out, but I'll try, I'll, I think I have a box for this one, so I'll probably do it. If not, I'll, I'll just go locally with it. Uh, the ones I've sold locally, none, none sold less than 110. The highest one locally sold for 150. Um, I've moved one on eBay. I think the very first one I flipped on eBay went for like 300 or so. Um, and that was, I think that was untested as well. That was an untested one. I just showed that it turned on. I reported kind of like what I saw with the print heads flying back and forth. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the whole point is none of those past five, I even put a, pr a, t a printer test page out of at all. So that's pretty crazy if you think about it, right? Um, but they were all Epson. I remember that. Every one of the ones I've hustled so far have been Epson. So that's important to note. Maybe important to note. I did plug this one at the thrift store. The little heads go flying back and forth. I mean, this thing is very intricate with belts and gears and pulleys and whatever. And I'm not going to pretend like I know the ins and outs of these things, right? But I know enough to make the money on them. So um, definitely something to check out for. They're definitely wider than most printers. In fact, they're probably twice the width. Um, and the funny thing is the one that did sell for $769.99 was untested. Like I literally put it used, untested, found at a estate sale. It was like a garage sale, but I put a estate sale. And it was bought within 10 minutes of me listing it. That was pretty nuts. I was like, holy crap, there's no way that this could possibly even go the way I'm thinking it's going to go. But it did. And I never got a return on it. I got to keep the money. It was pretty nuts. So uh, none of them have got returns on either. So that's pretty crazy. Anyways, uh, so yeah, there's College Picker in the feed. <laughs> Uh, I gave him the credit. There you go. Printer master. He is the printer master for sure. I remember the first time <clears throat> that I heard of College Picker even hustling printers. We had woken up early at a Saturday garage sale. Our garage sale, that we, our first one that we went to in the morning was two exits down the road. Beautiful summer morning. He came into town with his friend Ethan. The very first time I met him, I think he came into town with his friend Ethan. And we went to a garage sale and he picked up a box that had a toner printer in it. That was like an HP 1020 or 1060. I don't know what it was, but either way, it was a little desk jet or something like that, laser jet. Um, and yeah, that was basically it. So um, I saw him pick it up and I was like, why are you hustling printers? I thought those were kind of garbage. You know, like don't offices just get rid of those things? But he knew what he was talking about. He took that printer and he was in printer mode back then. And he was doing all kinds of flips that were like, what, 20 to 100, 20 to 50, 20 to 80. And some were just even nuts, like more nuts than that, because sometimes people use these printers to alter IDs with, right, or to print IDs on. And so there's certain printers that he knows about that people can't get anymore. So the secondhand market's the only place to find these things. Um, anyways, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny. And plus, he's also notorious for being printer guy because when the green room first 
uh, was created in the first year, he did put a printer bolo in there that plenty, uh, I wouldn't say plenty, but a fair amount of people in the green room were able to find it on Craigslist and flip it. I want to stay on FBA or eBay. Um, I want to say it was a Mark II something, 9,000. Anyway, it was a uh, photo printer that there was just an arbitrage opportunity for about a year on this thing. And uh, there were a fair amount of people in the green room who found the opportunity, who capitalized on it and made all this money on it. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, Okay, so uh, yeah, I will try to definitely, this one definitely turn, turns on, everything seems to be working. I will do a test page to see if the printer heads are clogged. And if I can't interpret that, I will take a picture of the test head, of what the page shows and I will put it on eBay. And usually people that flip these or rebuild them or whatever are gonna know exactly by the test page what is going on with that printer typically. Okay, so uh, that's that. Now, I promised you that there was something else and I'm gonna be fair with you guys on this one because I don't know anything about this, okay? But I know for five bucks that I have to get it. If not, it's a really amazing decoration. So what do you guys think it is real quick? Let me let me ask you this real quick. I got 100 viewers in the house. Oh my God. I'll ask you guys two things real quick. What is the next item I'm gonna talk about? Um, it's something I never get into. And then the second thing is, I don't ask for much. Hit the like button on the video. That would be super, super red. So let us guess what the next find is. Yeah, it's something you'll never, never think of me actually doing. But it's a $5 find, I found it last week. I should have shown it on some of the other videos, but I should have actually pulled it out Thrift Battle. That sounds really perverted, but I should have just shown it on Thrift Battle because that would have just destroyed the whole thing. But um, I still won by a small margin. But if I had brought this item out, that would have been game over. The whole thing would have been skewed. Uh, people would have been like, damn, like that's a pretty big hustle. So. Here are the guesses that are coming through. A horn, a monkey skull, <coughs> purses, chandelier, puppy, breast pump, woman's purse, bras, dress, a giant tuna. Oh, man. Someone watches my videos. Margaritaville. Oh, that's good. That's a big one. Um, it is pretty big, uh, this thing that I want to show you. A live, laugh, and love sign. No, it's not that. Oh, I hate those things. Um, a pair of women's shoes, a musket. Oh. So if someone did watch some of my other videos, <coughs> I did actually – hustle a gun a working prop gun from a garage sale for a dollar um and i remember cocking it on the actual broadcast live and i didn't know it was live until later when i was researching and i was doing all like the serial numbers and everything and it was like this is a real firing blunderbuss type thing and i was like oh flintlock pistol that's what it was called a real one. And I had never looked in the barrel, no nothing. There was flint on the lock and everything. And I was like flicking around with it being stupid. I couldn't believe it. So um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I could not, that one actually listed on armslist.com. I had to list that on a gun site because eBay wouldn't take it. Um, okay. So neon sign. These are all great, great <laughs> uh, guesses. Okay. You're not going to believe it. It's actually sitting right behind me. It's up against the wall right here. This was $5. Okay. So check this thing out. Yeah, I got that for five bucks. Now you might be thinking, what the hell? It's kind of cool. What is it? I think I know what, what I'm looking at. It's clearly a race car. So for five bucks, or I might have even been less. It was so cheap. I could not believe it. Um, so this thing right here is actually a oil canvas painting. Right? It's a canvas back, like it's oil painting. It's an oil painting on canvas. Um, it's in great condition. No rips, tears, stains, weird things, odors. Uh, on the back, it has the painter's name. Thank God, because like if it didn't have the painter's name, it'd be tough to figure it out. And to make things even kind of crazier, the thing, you can't really see it, but in the top corner right around here, there is, in fact, I will actually get up and show you this thing, right? So here is this painting I got, and there's a signature, dude, a signature that says, I don't know if it's Bobby Rahal or something like that, but I know it's someone sort of popular, right? I can see the Rahal part, right? And a Rahal person, I think there were two of them and they were F1 drivers back in the late 2000s. I did a little bit of research. But this is essentially an F1 commemorative painting or whatever made by a guy in Austin, Texas. And they have to be commissioned. He doesn't just paint them. He commissions, well, he does commission paintings. Um, and he paints certain things, but his going rate for an oil on canvas just to get one going is a grand. Now, I'm not saying this is going to sell for a grand. No way. But 
with it signed and everything like that, it's a tough one. I don't know what to do with it. I think I'm going to take it to a gallery consignment kind of thing. Um, I don't know what else to do with it. Um, but yeah, I know it's definitely signed by one of the Rahal people for sure. Um, <laughs> Tom Sawyer says, do that thing's worth some major money. I looked up the guy's site that commit that builds these things. And it says like, a, what did it say? Like the smallest oil painting that he does is a G is a thousand dollars for him to paint it. So this one definitely doesn't seem small to me. It's pretty big. Uh, this probably is a 36. I have no idea. 24 by 36. So yeah, um, it's cool looking. I like it. I was frantically searching around the rest of the savers for another one because typically someone that donates something like this will donate something else and make another bad decision. <laughs> but the fact that signatures on there too, because we are in Austin, Texas, and we are the only F1 track in America <clears throat> is actually in this town. So you would think it's in California or something, but it's not. So we have the only F1 track in America here, and the other ones are you know scattered across the world. So maybe that's how he got this Rahal person to sign it. I don't know. It's a good you know who knows. But uh, if someone knows that signature, let me know. It looks like a Sal or a Bobby. I don't know. It looks like a Sal Rahal, but I looked up Sal Rahal and I couldn't figure it out. So anyways. Um, Bobby Rahal says one the Indy 500 in 1986. There's a son of the Bobby Rahal kind of thing. I know there's a son, so maybe it's that. It does look like an S or something right there. And you can kind of maybe you can kind of help me out. But uh, yeah, you can see the signature right there. See, there it is. So, anyways, that's that. I thought it was a pretty killer pickup. Would you guys buy this thing for five bucks and just take a swing on it? Because I'm literally going to hang it on my wall until it sells. So. Um, that's what's going on. I'm not putting it on eBay. I guess I could, but I wouldn't even know the first place to start uh, trying to get that thing moved. So I thought it was pretty cool. That was definitely one of the most unsuspecting things. Um, what you know? What made me go into that one section of the store? I don't know. Like I just, oh, I know what it was. There was some IKEA ghetto linear print of like two GT40s going at it at some Le Mans race, and it was totally like made with a printer and it got me in that area and that's when i saw this thing like close by so anyways let me see what other kind of comments we have um <laughs> okay so rahal oil paintings on google are not very valuable hey never know i have no idea contact with the racetrack they might want it for a skybox cool graham rahal is bobby rahal's son all right awesome bobby rahal won the indy 586 um contact the artist he might want it back okay cool um yeah I'll, I'll take a, i'll take a look i have no idea i think it's pretty good looking art hell if nothing happens with this it's a five dollar print it's going to be on my wall i think it's going to be really awesome and uh i thought it was pretty nice it was a good pickup um bobby is the son of mike rahal and grandson of Graham rahal okay cool maybe it's one of, who knows which one it is um but i'm glad that you know this is the best part about having subscribers right and subscribers that are cool so I can put anything out there. I could be like, <clears throat> look, guys, I'm about to get into jeans. I don't want to get into clothing, but I want to only hustle high-end jeans. Like, you guys would totally help me out and just give me, like, the five best high-end jeans, for example, um, to go hustle. And that's one of the best parts of maybe my journey in YouTube is the fact that I built a lot of friends through this entire channel and a lot of people that would have my back when I, guys, when I need you guys, you know? So it's one of those instances where I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I do know that on a risk-based perspective, on a risk like there's no risk. Like there's just nothing. Like I would, I'll put five dollars on the ground all day long for something like this. Like you just cannot lose. There's no, there's nothing to lose on something like this. Now if I was to spend a hundred dollars on it, it's a different story. Like if it's worthless, okay, it could be a hundred dollars worth down the drain. You know, but five dollars is nothing. Like five bucks is just nothing. Um, and you're right. And this is how Chris Napier says it. Hey, always take a chance on something you don't mind keeping for yourself. Cool. Um, worth a try for five bucks is Ronda W. So anyway, so that's pretty much it. I'm probably going to list it, um, you know, locally. I think maybe taking it to an art gallery or something might help. I don't know. Maybe I will contact the person. But, it, uh, you know, thanks for watching my video. I always seem to forget something to show you guys or forget to show you guys some stuff. There's always something I forget to show. Um, I do actually have some FBA fines, some retail arbitrage stuff over there. I can't show you that because you guys will probably tank the market and destroy me. But for the most part, I can show you just about everything else. So, hey, if you guys are down with the road to 200 thing on eBay, let me know because it looks like me and College Picker are definitely adopting this uh, mentality of having 200 amazing items in an eBay store or just making that like the big primary 2018 goal is to really look at the inventory on a um, 
fun based perspective and go, look, what do I not care about anymore? Don't pick up any more of that stuff. Only pick up things that you care about. Only pick up things that are $50 or more in return with a couple exceptions. And uh, yeah, just have fun with it. Most important thing is have fun with it. So if you're a person out there has 500 items in your eBay store, or 700 and maybe you get knocked you know, left and right with relist fees and you know, you're not selling much, but like four items a week or like you're getting trickle sales and you're not happy with it because you feel like you're spinning your wheels and maybe adopt this road to 200 thing. And if it's something that interests you, right? And you want to see more of it, the more comments I get about it, the more people saying, yeah, you got to document that journey, the more I will, right? But if I don't hear many people talking about it or whatever, then I probably won't talk too much about it either, but I'll just do it. So if you guys are interested in that whole kind of thing, let me know. All right. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, thanks for watching my video. And uh, I will see you on the next Bonafide Hustler broadcast. You guys know where to find me if you have any questions. Bonafide Hustler Facebook. Shoot me whatever you want. I'll see if I can respond to it in a decent amount of time. Take it easy, guys.